What's up, bird dudes? Hopefully everyone is uh, doing fantastic. We, uh, things are going good here in the bird shed. We're, uh, just got done cleaning. <laughs> Takes forever nowadays, it seems like. Um, we're also getting some zebra finch pairs set up. That's what we're gonna be focusing on today is our zebra finches. I've got zebra finches set up in individual pairs. I also have zebra finches set up in a colony setting. We're gonna kind of look at both of those and I'm gonna tell you why I decided to um, do it both ways. Hopefully you guys' birds are doing good. Hopefully everyone is uh, enjoying the holidays, wherever you're at in the world. Um, hopefully those are going good for you guys. Hopefully your, your birdies enjoy the holidays as well. Maybe get a little treat or a little present from you guys. So hopefully that'll, that'll work out. If you guys are brand new to the channel, my name's Chris, known as Bird Nerd. Uh, we cover everything birds in here. Uh, how to breed them, how to house them, uh, how to sell them, <laughs> you know, really health tips and, and just how to learn more about birds. So hopefully you guys, uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button, join the Bird Nerd family, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy what you see through here. So like I said, we're gonna focus on the zebra finches. And I did show you guys earlier, so we, I did get some new zebra finches. I got some orange breasted ones. Um, that's really mostly all I have. I do have a few other uh, variations uh, and we'll, we'll get to those and show you those. But really uh, trying to focus on uh, specialty uh, zebra finches. I know they're super common to get a hold of. Mostly the wild type or the black cheek, chestnut flanked whites, which are the all white ones for the females and the males have all white with orange uh, flankings and cheeks. So those are really common throughout the world. Uh, but there's so many different variations of zebra finches and really cool variations. And I've been trying for a while. Uh, if you guys noticed this last summer, I, I did get rid of mo pretty, all of my zebra finches. I sent some to, to my brother's house to breed and another breeder to keep. Uh, but I haven't kept any here because I've been on the lookout for uh, some orange breasted zebra finches. I also love the, the black breasts, black face uh, mutations. It's basically the all black, black cheek uh, zebra finches. So those ones look really cool. I still still am trying to find some of those um, that don't cost a lot and I don't have to ship them in because uh, right now it's winter time. We can't do that. The birds would uh, die most definitely. So. Um, but yeah, so we want to show you them. The last video I did, I did show you that I did get some new ones. I've had them, I've had them for a while. Uh, it, I just haven't been able to post as many videos as I would like to. Uh, you know, life's crazy, things get busy. And um, so we'll, we'll focus on these guys, show you them in depth, and, and then kind of focus on the, the colony ones and give you pros and cons of both and what I'm doing to set them, set them up and uh, in hopes that we can have success and why I, I did it both ways. So let's flip the camera around. Let's get uh, get some close-ups on these guys while I talk to you. All right, guys, so this is our, the first pair that I'd like to show you. Um, the male, look at that, got some beautiful orange on them. Uh, and throughout there's, there's different uh, or varying colors as far as intensity and, and how much orange covers the birds. Uh, throughout the world. Uh, there's people that have orange breasts, uh, zebra finches that, that cover the whole head and down to the breasts and the, the back feathers. So um, I'd love to find some of those eventually and get my hands on them. But uh, you know, you go with what you can get for right now. But 
So we've got this pair right here. They are uh, beautiful, a beautiful pair. Really enjoy them. And what I did, so I have, I've got six pairs total. And what I did actually is I threw all of them together in a colony setting. And then I watched them as they paired up. And believe it or not, they actually paired up to what I was hoping they would. Thank, thank heavens. <laughs> so, um, and then what I did is once I saw that they were paired up, um, and, and what I mean by that is the male's courting the female. She's receptive. She's preening his feathers back. They're both looking at nests together. So those are all good signs that, that your your pair or your, your zebra finches have paired off and they're looking to breed. And so what I did is I, I looked for that. And once I saw that, I caught them and I put them in, in these individual breeding cages. And the reason why I put them in individual breeding cages uh, is because I want to ensure the bloodlines. I want to ensure uh, the color variations that, that these two have and uh, just make sure that whatever babies they're kicking out uh, aren't possibly from other zebra finches and, and other colors and mutations and whatnot. So uh, really wanna try and keep them, you know, as close to, to what the parents look like as I possibly can. So that's one of the reasons why. Also another reason, and, and we can get into a little bit more depth when I show you the colony. Um, zebra finches are aggressive and even to their own kind, once they've paired off, even though I put them in my, my big, large uh, breeding aviary, I tried to spread out the nest boxes. Uh, they still chase each other around like crazy, defending their nests. And um, I just wanted to try and eliminate that as much as I could. And one way to do that is to pull the pairs out and put them in their own cage by themselves. They don't have to defend their nests or their territory with anyone else. Um, it just helps them to focus on each other, focus on breeding, uh, and usually you get better results. Now, not saying that colony breeding is not successful. I've done it before. Zebra finches are very easy to breed and willing to breed. Uh, so you could breed them in a colony setting easily. More times than not though, in a colony setting is you get, uh, depending on the size of your area, one to three dominant pairs. And what happens is those dominant pairs, they choose the prime breeding spots, uh, the prime nest boxes, and they make sure that everyone else stays away from it so they they can potentially inhibit others from breeding and also it may affect their breeding because they spend more time chasing the other zebra finches away than actually sitting on their nest incubating the eggs and raising their chicks so um it can go both ways now there are some zebra finches individually you know, i mean the personalities are individual right some of them are, are more aggressive than others uh, some males and females are super chill and calm and you can uh, house several pairs together in harmony. Um, so it really just depends on what you have. Keep an eye on them and, and make sure that, you know, if they are being aggressive to others, if you have the options, pull them and give them their own uh, cages. So let's jump up. We'll, we'll give you a, a, a peek at this other pair that I have here in the, in the breeding cages and, and let you see what we've got there. All right, this is our second pair. Uh, you can see the male, he's a normal gray back and he's got some pretty good coloration on his breast and, and on his cheeks. And the female is a, a fawn, but she's got a lot of coloration on her back, you can see there. So I'm really excited for these babies. And it may be, it may, be, it may skip a generation. It may be that all the males or all the babies come out looking like the male, the dark gray. Um, split to the, the fawn color that the mom has. I need to brush up on my, my zebra genetics. So those out there watching this video that, that know the zebra de genetics better than I do, um, let me know what you think the babies will, will come out looking like here. Um, my guess is that they'll all be normal gray and potentially sex linked to the fawn. That, that's what I'm calling, but drop some comments down below. Let me know what you guys think, those experts out there that hopefully um, are, are watching this video and enjoying it. So like I said, the male's got some pretty good colorations on his breast and his cheeks that the orange wraps around close to the back of his head. Um, just a little gap in between on the back of the head and his color. So looking very well there. Good size. Uh, these guys got some really good size for zebra finches, both male and female. So excited about this. They're very active and um, already showing signs that they're wanting to breed, checking out the nest box in here. So, and I just put them in the cages today. So literally brand new, fresh uh, in these cages. Now this male, he was the dominant male and the female was the dominant female. 
So I had all six pairs in that aviary together, and these were the two that made sure nobody came close to them. They, they had already chosen their nest box, and they were keeping everybody away. So I, I made sure I, I grabbed these guys that had already paired up and brought them in here. And like I said, um, I'd like to try and keep the genetics as, as pure as I can and know what my babies are, what they're split for, um, in, in hopes that I can continue the, the generations down the line and get specific colors out of the, of the offspring to come. Uh, these birds came from a breeder um, back east, uh, so I'm not 100% sure if they're, if they're split to anything, you know, black cheek, things like that. So uh, we may get some surprises with the babies and uh, maybe throw, throw us through a loop a little bit, but excited to see what we're gonna get here and uh, really the, the, the cool uh, markings that these birds have, looking to really get an established breeding line here of our orange breasts here in the Utah area and, you know, central west coast area to, uh, to, to try and help some of our breeders out that are looking for different variations within the zebra finch family. So good looking pair here. Let's jump up to the other pair. All right, hopefully you guys can see this pair. Um, the cage is really high up and it just makes for some really awkward lighting. It, it's right next to a light and it just kind of throws it off on my camera. So if you guys can't see this pair very well, uh, I apologize. Um, got a good looking male here. He is a, a fawn. Um, and then the, the female that he's paired up with, she's down there. She's uh, got more penguin uh, in her um, as far as the orange breast goes. So like I said, the, their babies may skip a generation um, and uh, it may be, Interesting to see what their babies come out as. I thought originally to pair this male up down below with the fawn female that we have below just to, to keep the fawn babies uh, going, uh, but he decided to pair up with this female and I figured we'll just go with it for right now and see what kind of babies we can get out of them. And then we can, we can definitely pair their babies up with that previous pair that I just showed you guys. And then we would, uh, hopefully get some fawn babies out of that second generation of babies. So, um, you know, trying to plan ahead a little bit and see what, what we have for next year's breeding program with these orange breast uh, zebra finches in hopes that we can uh, continue the lines and, and strengthen them, continue to get nice large zebra finches. We've got several different pairs um, and zebra finches from different bloodlines. So I think we've got a good good amount to work with here in hopes for many years to come uh, with the orange breast zebra finches. And then hopefully down the road as we go, we'll slowly add to this population and, and, and see what we can get there. So let me bring the phone around to the other side and in hopes that maybe you guys get a little bit better view of these guys. They really are pretty. You can see that fawn on the male got some good orange coloration on them and then the female's got more of the penguin in her both great sized zebra finches the female is maybe a slightly larger than the male but they're very uh, comparable to each other so super excited for this um and and this the breeding program that hopefully we'll be able to start with these guys so Really excited there. So let's jump down into the, the aviary. Uh, I just have two pairs down in the aviary and we'll kind of look at them and see what we've got going. All right, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Well, as I open my door, so this is one of my breeding cages that I have here down below, I can zoom out. Oh, there he is, he's right there. Um, so this is where I used to have, uh, was breeding pink lemonade. She is done, so we pulled it out and. And I originally had all of my, my six pairs of zebra finch in there and we had nest boxes lined up there. We had nest boxes lined up here below and a couple up there above and between. Um, but as due to zebra finch nature, guys, they, they, they just were bickering and pushing each other around. And I wanted to be a little bit selective on, on what birds bred so this what i have in here so you can see that my females are not orange breasts so my one female is a chestnut flank white and then in the back my other females are normal gray uh well she's she's split english uh but a normal gray and also split to black cheek and then i've got an orange breast male a fawn male 
and and then uh, orange breast normal male. Colors and markings are not as great on the normal male. You can see there, but um, and and then the, the orange the orange or the fawn orange breast male there. He's got some pretty good colorings. He just does not have great size. He's pretty small. Um, so I'm hoping to pair him up with some of these bigger uh, female zebra finches in hopes to, to get some larger babies. Like I said, the babies will most likely all come out normal and, and then we'll, we'll need to put those babies uh, paired up with, with some of my other orange breasted babies that will come out. So, so we'll be skipping a few generations, especially with these pairs here, as far as just getting the, the orange breasted colors to show in, in next generation babies. So, um, but we'll most likely leave these two pairs together um, and, and let them uh, have free reign of this cage and, and see what we can get out of these guys. Hopefully we'll be successful. We've got uh, you know several other pairs that I, that I could be thrown in here. We've got starfinches that are getting ready um, and another pair of rosy borks that are starting to get ready that I was thinking of putting in here. Um, but just wanted to give it a shot with the zebra finch, especially with it being winter. And some of my other birds are a little bit more sensitive to the temperature differences and whatnot, uh, more so than the zebra finches. They will breed uh, anytime you give them a nest box. So uh, hopefully these guys will, will also breed for me. Like I said, the baby, most of their babies will just come out looking normal, normal gray, most likely, unless my males got uh, some different genetics in them uh, with these females but that's kind of where we're at and hopefully we'll have some success with our zebra finches you can see we've got two pairs in there and i've got three nest boxes there's the other one we're zoomed in a little bit so they're really big to the eye but um always provide more nest boxes than you have pairs to give them the option i would imagine they'll choose this nest box and that nest box to breed uh, but so far doing good seem to be interested in each other um, as zebra finches are they're not hard to breed they usually accept new mates readily and will take what's available to them so uh, never really a huge issue for them to pair up but just wanted to show you guys what we've got going on in here and we'll see how successful we are with these guys compared to my individual pairs in the breeding cages so um, a few tips on zebra finches like i said first one provide more nest boxes than you have pairs. Make sure you've got enough space. Like I said, if we zoom out here, they've got quite a bit of flying room, um, definitely enough space for the two pairs that we have in here. Probably was a little too crowded for the six pairs. That's why we pulled some of them out to give them their own cages. Uh, but figured I'd try it out here so that they could select their own mates first and then I could, then I could pull them out and separate them. So, um, Trying to think anything else here uh, as far as tips go. Provide as much uh, breeding material as you can. Zebra finches love to build their nests, so I don't have a whole lot here. It's pretty bare, so I will be throwing out some cocoa fiber, some shredded paper, uh, things for them to start building their nest. They will most likely start plucking off all of these leaves uh, to help uh, contribute to put into their nest. So um, make sure you, you include ample amounts of, of breeding and nesting material for them to be satisfied. They usually fill those nest boxes as full as they possibly can and then lay their eggs. So um, probably another tip there for you guys to, to take note of, but let me know what questions you guys have on the zebra finches uh, and uh, maybe some concerns or issues that you guys are having, drop them in the comments. We'll see if we can address them in the next video um, that's focused on our zebra finches. So. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope your guys' birds are doing fantastic and are healthy. Happy holidays to everyone throughout the world. Happy holidays to your birds. Appreciate your support on the channel, and we'll see you next time.